Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Toddy Walnuts update video. Thank you for tuning in and taking a few minutes of your day to spend with me. I always do appreciate that. Today I have a little mishmash of things like I always do. I have uh, a couple titles from Vinegar Syndrome. I got a steelbook from Scream Factory. I got a couple of out of print DVD box sets. I got a new release from Severin, a couple releases from Scream Team releasing some Disney stuff, some PS4 goodness, and we'll just jump into it here with the first title, which I pre-opened. This is the Piranha Steelbook that Scream Factory put out recently over the last couple weeks. And I'm looking forward to checking this out. I do own the movie on DVD, and I did want to upgrade this. I think the Steelbook looks really cool. There's the disc. And it kind of has a plain background to appear like you're looking underwater or you're underwater looking up. Kind of murky background. People eat fish. Fish don't eat people. Really nice looking steel book. I wanted to grab this one. It was on, I picked it up on Amazon for, it was around 20 bucks, 22 bucks. I thought that was a good deal. So I snatched it up and you do get some special features. The biggest thing is you get a new 4K scan with the original camera negative. There's some new audio commentary with Corman, which is going to be great. I haven't popped this in to check it out yet. There's other commentary with uh, Dante and others. There's a making of with more interviews. Behind the scenes footage, bloopers, outtakes. Additional scenes from the TV version, etc. So I wanted to grab this one and add it to the collection. I do have a couple other Scream Factory Steelbooks pre-ordered that are coming up. A couple of more Corman classics. So that was Piranha. The next one I picked up is from Scorpion releasing. And this was a title I picked up on Ronin Flicks. Another cheesy kind of a B-movie drive-in classic. Or just drive-in movie. I wouldn't even consider it a classic. But this is Iron Warrior. Film is from 1986. It is rated PG-13, and it has a running time of 87 minutes. A kind of a sword and sandal fantasy type movie. There's a little bit of the synopsis if you'd like to pause it and read it. Region A only. And there's not much for extras. There's no booklet or reversible cover, but I wanted to pick this up. I do like these type of movies. So that is Iron Warrior, The Legend. I guess I'll jump into the Vinegar Syndrome titles that I picked up. And these are titles that are recently out of print, and I was able to get them for a very reasonable price on a secondary market, namely eBay, for these particular titles. And the first one is an Ed Wood film called Orgy of the Dead. This one is now sold out with the slipcover, so I picked it up. I got it for a very good price. It was almost the same price as um, Vinegar Syndrome was selling them, so I'm not out of pocket much for that. And it does have some pretty good special features here. Let me see if I can tilt that back so there's no glare. But you get a 2K scan of the film. There's commentary tracks, interviews, still gallery. And it's a film from 1965, 90 minutes running time. It is all region, and it is a DVD Blu-ray combo pack. We'll take a look at the disc art here. This is the DVD in gorgeous Astro Vision. There's the blue. And then here is the cover. I flipped it already. That is the same image that is on the slip cover. So I flipped it to that cover. And the slip is very nice. I like the different psychedelic colors. I really do believe that Vinegar Syndrome puts out the best slips. Not only are they thicker and more durable, but they're just uh, more appealing to the eye to me. They just look really nice. So picked up Orgy of the Dead. 
The next one is an upgrade for me. I do own the Scorpion releasing DVD with Katarina's Nightmare Theater. Um, this is the Vinegar Syndrome edition, Blu-ray DVD combo. We'll take a look at the slip first. I think that looks really cool. Excellent. Okay, and then there is the original cover. That's the cover that is on the DVD. The dreams, the nightmares, the desires, the fears, the mystery, the revelation, the warning. The incubus, he is the destroyer. I, I watched this a couple nights ago, about three nights ago. And it was a movie that I had seen before. I popped it in. It was, um, it was a decent watch. It was a slow burn, but this kid here in the middle with that blue denim shirt right there, he is troubled with horrible nightmares of people being murdered. And shortly after he has these nightmares, the people do end up being murdered by a demon-like force that they call the Incubus. And the Incubus rapes and brutally murders women and uh, I thought it was a fun watch. It was a, it was a decent watch. I would recommend it. It's not a great movie, but it's still a decent watch. Um, there's a very aging John Cassavetes in here. And you guys, if you guys know anything about Cassavetes, he had a, a very bad alcoholism problem in his life. And you can see that he had aged tremendously in this movie. And he was looking a little rough but I thought he still played a good role. And John Ireland is in the film as well. John Ireland had his own problems as well. <laughs> I think he wanted to marry a 16 year old when he was in his 40s at <laughs> one point, but there's the DVD. And there's the blue. Incubus. I was glad to pick this one up. I got this one also on eBay and it was right around, I think, I think I got all of these Vinegar Syndrome titles each for about 30 to 35 bucks a piece, which is about par for the course for these editions. You know, if you guys know that once these slipcovers sell out, they can go up in the 50s, 60s, 80s. So I got these for really good prices in my opinion. And here is Penitentiary, and this is one that I was missing for my collection. And if you guys watched my other update video I did a few videos back you, you know that I got the uh, part two but part one was sold out on the vinegar syndrome website without the slip cover I don't want to get these without slips but after they had their vinegar syndrome halfway to Black Friday sale after they were all back and they got the website up and running again they did list a couple titles that were previously sold out and I noticed that this was on there so I grabbed it and this was one I had to pick up and I think it was under 30 on their website. It was, I think it was around 22 to 25, I believe. So I snatched it up. I was happy to get it. And these are good movies. So now I do have part one and two on blue, and I do have the DVDs from Arrow Video. It's also a 4K scan, which is incredible for a movie like this. It does have some archival commentary tracks. It's, um, I don't think they were able to get any, any new tracks for this film. But I'm still glad to get this. It's a film from 1979, running time of 99 minutes. It is all region. There's the DVD and the blue. reversible cover and we'll take a look at the slip it's really nice so I feel glad to add this to the collection you know if you guys are anything like me and you have a collection going and you're missing a piece you want to complete that and it feels good to complete any holes in the collection so I'm glad that I got that taken care of. The next one is the latest edition from Severin Films and this is called Night Killer 
and they also called it Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. And there's a reason why they did that. I'll get into that in a little bit. But this is a film from Claudio Fragasso, who wanted to make a kind of a psychological thriller. He didn't want to make a monster movie or a, a gory horror film. And if you watch the special features on here, I watched both of the special features last night. The first one was called The Virginia Claw Massacre. That was an interview with Fragasso. And it's about 25 minutes, I believe, if I remember correctly. And it's in Italian. You have to read the, the English subtitles. But basically what he was saying was um, at this point in his career, this was a film from 1989, he was really into Federico, Federico Fellini, and he wanted to kind of come off as that type of director, even though he was making a low-budget horror film. He thought he was going to take his career to the next step, and these are pretty much words coming out of his own mouth. And the Italian producers who were backing this movie didn't like his original vision for the film, so they had Bruno Mattei come in and add gore scenes, and he also added an alternate beginning to the film where they, there was some dancers on the stage. And it kind of set up the look of the killer, which if you look at this guy here, uh, oh, there's another um, interview too from uh, Rosella Drudy, and she was kind of a, she was a screenwriter for the film. She admitted that they tried to get a Freddy Krueger look-alike with that burnt face mask and that long alien's claw. They tried to make it look like a Freddy Krueger um, hand. Um, and she also admitted that they tried to ride the coattails of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, which at the time, in 1989, did not have an official Part 3 release but did have a release a year after this was released with uh, Leatherface TCM3. So that was the official Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. But uh, I guess Fragasso was pretty pissed off when uh, they brought Matei in to add the, the gore scenes. But he said after it was all done and he had time to cool down, he agreed with the decision and he thought the movie looked better with the addition of the gore scenes. Uh, as far as a overall movie, this was not a great movie, but it was still a fun watch. It was the first time I can remember where there are two killers in the film. There's two rapist killers, serial killers, in the film, and it's through the eyes of this young lady here with that gun in her mouth. And there's a definite red herring in this film. I'm not going to spoil it for anybody. I think you guys should check this out. If you get a chance to see this movie, if you've seen it already, please don't uh, spoil it for others. Don't leave any comments below. You can leave comments, just leave the spoil leave it spoiler free, free please. <laughs> um, the ending to me was okay. It was uh, I was expecting a little more, but all in all, I thought it was a fun watch. It was a good movie. I would watch it again, but it'll probably be at least another year or so before I pop this one back in. But the the uh, special features, the two interviews at the end were excellent. I thought they were really good. The uh, Fragasso interview was excellent. He talks about how he was, how they filmed this. It was out on the East Coast. I think it was filmed in Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And he said it was during winter time and it was like 10 degrees outside for the scenes that they filmed outside. And he was talking about how much different it was on the east coast of the U.S. compared to Italy. And uh, I just thought it was really fun to, to listen to him talk about that film. So moving on. Oh, I was also able to get a second copy. So most likely this will be thrown in for the contest. So... And if you guys know anything about this release, it, it was sold out on pretty much on uh, pre-order. And I took a gander on eBay, and it's unbelievable the prices that people are charging. I wish I could just go through and delete auctions. I know it's their right to ask whatever they want. It's their movie. And people are, it's their right to pay as much as they want for a movie. I just think it's ridiculous that some of these are 80 to 100 bucks already. 
uh, stay tuned and you guys can get a chance to win one for free I'll give you this for free so I just I can't believe how people are with those but that's just how it goes what are you gonna do I was also able to pick up a second copy of Sudden Fury I watched this one recently this will be also given away as a contest prize um, I watched this about a week ago and I thought it was really well done it was a good movie it was a low buck it's a Canadian I, I would call it a horror film horror suspense um, I'm not going to give it away. This one also had kind of a twist to it. But it's a, basically it's about a husband and a wife who are having marital issues and they're pretty much getting ready to go through a divorce. The love is kind of lost and gone. And the guy here, he's, um, he's trying to strike oil, basically. He's trying, not strike oil, but he's trying to turn his work career around and there's a chance for him to buy property and I'm not going to get too much further into that but he takes his wife on a cross-country trip and he wants to show her some things about his plans for work and then during the course of this trip bad things happen and bad turns to worse and there's a stranger that uh, witnesses a couple things and he becomes um, a big part of the movie and I'll just leave it at that because I'm afraid that I'm going to give too much of it away but I thought this was really well done it was a very low buck operation and I thought it was really really well done for um, the amount of money that was put into the movie and it was just kind of a sleeper to me and I I was glad that I got a chance to see it I never had heard about this movie before until Vinegar Syndrome put it out it's a film from 1975 92 minutes but that's uh, Sudden Fury and this is a extra copy that I have so this will be a prize. The latest edition that I picked up is Blue Underground's edition of New York Ripper and this is in my player right now. I'm planning to watch it as soon as I'm done with this video. This is the new 4k restoration. This is the three disc limited edition with the lenticular. The lenticular looks really good in person. It doesn't really flip the picture but it does show the depth and it's not really picking up on my camera but you can definitely see the depth of the 3D image there. You can see the, the switchblade wielding maniac and the one of the victims. And the newer, it's a newly commissioned art. And there's the original. I have this movie many times. I really enjoy this movie. But this is the Blu-ray DVD and CD soundtrack, which I really love that um, Blue Underground is doing this with these releases. And you can tell there's a ton of special features. And I pre-ordered this on Amazon. And I think the pre-order price was 30 bucks. And when it came out, it was only 22 bucks. So Amazon refunded me the difference. And I thought that was really cool. So if you're interested, I say I said I got one of them. I got the Blu-ray in my player right now. But if you're interested, go check out Amazon right now and get this for your collection. It's a must have, in my opinion. We'll go through the book. It's got a nice thick book. There is the CD soundtrack. There's the cover without that lenticular. There's the DVD. Really looking forward to checking this out in 4K. But uh, here's the book. And uh, Blue Underground is really doing some nice things. They're taking it back to their Anchor Bay days. Back when Anchor Bay was the King Supreme and you guys know that Blue Underground is a is an offshoot of Anchor Bay kind of a subsidiary and they're doing a lot of good things now still Anchor Bay pretty much got out of the horror business for the most part I mean they still do release a few things here and there but it used to be their primary focus there you can see the uh, CD track listing a really really nice edition I'm glad to have this one this is a must own in my opinion that is the New York Ripper so we'll keep moving on let's see what we got into next I got a couple of titles from Scream Team releasing and the first one here is called Cherokee Creek and this is a comedy horror and 
I went into this with the attitude that I really do like Bigfoot movies and I was really looking forward to this. That cover art looks amazing. Um, but it was probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life and it wasn't a, it wasn't one of those movies where it's so bad it's good. It was just a terrible movie. <laughs> I'm sorry guys. I, I got to keep it honest with you. I'm going to keep it in the collection but the two guys that made the movie, they call themselves Movie Mafia. They actually act in this movie as well. Uh, there's the two guys, right? The guy with the jean jacket pointing and the guy with the holding the beer next to the park ranger. Those are the Movie Mafia guys and they're, they um, star in the movie. Their names are Billy Blair. Billy Blair is the guy with the jean jacket. And Todd Jenkins is the guy holding the beer. He was the um, director of the film. But there's the disc. And it did have a reversible cover. I put it in these black cases because I thought it looked a lot better like this. But let's see if you can see that cover on the inside. That cover is not as good to me as this cover. And it looked better in the black, so I just I popped it in there. But it didn't save the movie. <laughs> the movie was bad. I'm curious if anybody else feels the same way that I do. If you want to leave a comment below, I had, I had never seen this. I never saw the movie before, but I didn't see anybody um, do a review on the movie either. So maybe there are some other people who felt the same way. But if any of my viewers have seen this and they want to comment down below, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe the movie's good and I got to watch it again. Let me know your thoughts on that if you want to. And the second and last one from Scream Team Releasing was called Murder Made Easy. I flipped that cover and I put it in a black case. Another movie that fell short for me, um, it, was a, it was a different kind of movie. I gave them credit for a different kind of a concept for a movie, and I'll just kind of get into it really quick without giving too much details. First, if you look at that cover, it looks like it's a slasher movie, but it's not. It's, um, there's a couple in the beginning of the movie and they're talking about how the the female lead in this movie lost her husband. He passed away. And the best friend of the husband is kind of weaseling his way into her life. And they're kind of a couple, I guess. And it's they're talking about how rumors are about them. And they invite guests over for dinner. And one by one, they kill them in different types of ways. And there's a big twist at the end. I'm not going to give it away, but um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. But another one that was, it, this was actually not, it's not too bad, but it was uh, not very good either. There's the couple. It's an hour and 16 minutes and I, I thought it could have even been a little bit shorter than that, which an hour and 16 is pretty short as it is, but they could have probably wrapped this all up in an hour. There's the, there's the original cover right here, and that's the way the movie came, and I flipped the cover. That's, eh, it's kind of plain. Oh, I like this cover a little bit better, but that cover is misleading, because if you just, if you were at a store and you saw this on the shelf, you would think that there's a, it's a slasher film, but not really, it's not a slasher film. So, all right, move those out of the way. Again, if you want to comment on either of these, let me know what you think. Um, Maybe I'm way off on these, and maybe i got to watch them again, but it just they just weren't my thing, really. I was also able to pick up the new Scooby-Doo movies, the almost complete collection, and these are the movies going back to the 60s. I had this on my wish list on Amazon for a while. When this first came out, it was like 55 bucks for this set. And every once in a while, Amazon has like a a one-day flash sale and I got this for $29.99 so I saved 20 bucks I had to grab it um, then it went right back up to 55 bucks again and then a couple days later I noticed that it went back down so if you guys are interested in this um, and you want to pick it up for cheap keep a lookout for a sale don't pay the full price for this so you'll be able to get this for probably 30 bucks or less at some point but um, we'll go through and see what's all in this set here. You get the uh, special features, Hanna-Barbera Kennel Club roasts Scooby-Doo. 
Uptown with Scooby-Doo and the Harlem Globetrotters, Girls Rock. There you can see that um, these are all the movies that include the Harlem Globetrotters, Dick Van Dyke, The Three Stooges, Jonathan Winters, Don Knotts, Laurel and Hardy, Mama Cass Elliot, Sonny and Cher, Batman, Robin, Speed Buggy, and more. It's a two-disc two disc set with uh, 23 of their best movies, or capers. Here is kind of a, um, the titles of the film on disc one, and disc two. I haven't popped it in to check out the quality yet, but um, these animated, even the older animated shows, they really clean up and look nice on Blu-ray. So I'm looking forward to checking these out. That is the Scooby-Doo, the almost complete collection. I didn't do any research to find out which ones are missing, but they got 23 of them on there. And then I picked up Goosebumps 2, which I, I watched Goosebumps 1 last weekend, and I thought it was pretty good. It was a fun watch. I really enjoyed it. I liked the cast, and I liked, um, even though I wasn't a big Jack Black fan, I thought he played a really good part. He played um, R.L. Stein in the first one. I don't know if any of the characters from the first one make an appearance in part two. It looks like it's a whole new cast. But I'm still looking forward to checking this out. This is the 4K. Got this on eBay, brand new. I opened it up already, but uh, I think I've only paid like, it was like 15 bucks or less for a 4K. You get the 4K, a Blu-ray, and a digital copy, which I gave the copy away already. There's the 4K Blu-ray, and there's the regular Blu-ray. So the price was right for me to grab this, and I wanted to pick it up to complete the current collection anyway there's only two parts out so far so um, I was able to pick up a couple PS4 games I'm gonna give a shout out here because all three of these games I'm about to show were talked about on my buddy controller cramps YouTube page I know many of you are already familiar with mr. controller cramps I don't know his first name but he's a he has a great channel he has uh, a variety of things that he likes to show on his channel, and he, he likes horror movies. But what I was really impressed with was his PlayStation 4 collection. He has over, over 300 games, and he recently did a video to showcase his games. And I'm going to leave that link down below, and I encourage you guys to go check him out and show him a little love and support. He's a great guy. Um, uh, he's definitely worthy of a sub, in my opinion. I, I think he's, he has a great channel. But all three of these titles that I'm about to show were mentioned on his video, and I've been keeping track of, keeping in contact with him on, on YouTube, and he watches my videos sometimes, and he shows me a little support back, which is, that's the way it rolls, you know, that's how we do it. Um, but he gave me the heads up, not just me, but everybody in YouTube land, that Spider-Man, it was about a week or two ago, that they were selling this for 20 bucks at GameStop. So I went and picked it up. I love Spider-Man, and I haven't played the game yet. I did open it up already, though. But um, for 20 bucks, man, this it's like an open world, kind of like the Batman game was, from what I understand. I was all in for 20 bucks, And I do love PlayStation. I, I own two different consoles. I have the uh, PlayStation Pro and just a regular PS4. Um, I will leave my PlayStation uh, ID down below if you guys want to add me on the network. It's just Todd E. Walnuts with no spaces in between. Todd E. Walnuts, just one word. If you guys want to look me up over there, if not, that's fine too. But uh, looking forward, to, for 20 bucks, I mean, that's, that's a gimme. And then a couple of uh, role-playing games. I'm, I'm a big-time role-playing game fan. I, those are my favorite. I like role-playing games, and I like survival horror games. Those are my two favorite genres in the, in the gaming business. But these are two two games I'd never heard of before but I know controller cramps has very similar taste to mine from just watching his videos and some of the things he says are a lot of things that I believe too and when he mentioned that battle chasers night war was a very good role-playing game and it was kind of underrated I was in 
and I haven't popped it in yet. It's still sealed. But this is a classic turn-based Japanese role-playing game. And it kind of looks like it even goes back to like, um, doesn't that kind of look like Link from The Legend of Zelda? And I, I love these old, like uh, it kind of reminds me of like the old Final Fantasy games and stuff like that. So I'm all in. I'm really looking forward to checking these out. And this is called Battle Chasers Night War. And he was talking about Moonlighter, and I think this was a crowdfunded game that came out not too long ago. I'm not exactly sure when it came out, but he was saying this is another underrated must-own, so I grabbed these. And I really don't know much about it, but you can see it does have that, that retro vibe, which I'm really, really looking forward to checking out. That is Moonlighter. If you know anything about these three games, Go ahead and comment below. If you would like to add me to the network, Todd E. Walnuts, no spaces. I will see you there. And the second shout out in this video is to my buddy Jordan from the channel Given Up 96. Jordan was one of the first people I met on YouTube, and that was over like 10 years ago now, I think 10 or 11 years ago. Uh, way before I was making videos, I was just a, a watcher and a commenter, and he was a channel that I really liked to watch. And he kind of took a break for a while, and he used to show a lot of horror, and he kind of got away from it. I know life gets busy. He's got a girlfriend and a full-time job, and we don't always have a lot of time to make videos. I know that, but uh, I really enjoyed his videos. He told me recently he's thinking about getting back into it more often. He still does upload videos where he does like the loot crates and the horror boxes and all that BAM boxes and stuff like that and it's still fun to watch. But he really knows a lot about horror films. It'll be good to see him get back into the horror game. But uh, Jordan and I have been gifting each other. Every once in a while we'll send each other a title and he wanted to send me one so he sent me Toy Story. This is the Best Buy exclusive, the 4K, Blu-ray, and digital code. Digital code's gone already. And thank you very much, Jordan. Yours will be out probably today's Wednesday as I'm filming this. I will get out to the post office tomorrow morning. I'm not going to tell you guys what I got him. I'm going to link his channel below, and if you want to sub to him and see what I got for him, you can do that. Show him a little support. But I'm, here's another movie that I have many times, but this is a... A classic and one that I love. So this is the 4K disc right here. Here is the DVD and you can see some pretty cool background art there. Blu -ray, oh, that was the Blu-ray and the 4K Blu-ray. I think I might have said DVD. but And then there is the back I think Jordan said he was going to, he sent this directly from Best Buy to my house, and he said he was going to include a letter and I, with the, um, the purchase, but I didn't see it. I looked in the box and I did not see it. It could be that Best Buy screwed up or maybe he forgot to send one, but, so that is Toy Story Steelbook. Really, really looking forward to that, Just checking that out in 4K. Got a couple more Disney stuff. This is the Cinderella Blu-ray that I got from the Disney Movie Club. This was the monthly Blu-ray, the Blu-ray of the month or whatever you want to call it. If you ordered this, you got Cinderella as well as the Movie Club exclusive Cinderella 2 and 3. So not really much to say about those. I, I like to collect the Disney movies, so I picked these up. And it also came with a little, um, a little lithograph, which I have in a different room. So. And then I got the Target exclusive the limited edition filmmaker gallery and storybook Cinderella. So now I gotta move some stuff. I'm gonna show you guys a little lot that I picked up on eBay. I've got a bunch of Scooby Doo movies. This lot, the starting price was 99 cents and it was uh, $9.99 for shipping. So I made a bid and I was the only bidder. 
So I got all of these movies for 99 cents plus $9.99 for shipping. And there's a couple of snapper cases. You don't see these too often. This one's kind of broke a little bit. I don't mind. I got the I clean these up and put them in different cases too, not the snapper cases, but you'll see in a, in a minute here, but some of the discs were a little smudgy, like uh, probably children were handling these at some point, but that's Scooby-Doo Goes to Hollywood. Here's uh, four TV episodes called What's New Scooby-Doo? Root Scary 6. And it includes a bonus episode. And the third and last snapper case was Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf. See if I can pop this open here. And I put these all in white cases. I cleaned up the discs and they look like they're brand spanking new right now. So this one is called What's New Scooby Doo Complete Season 2. Here's What's New Scooby Doo Complete Season 1. I could not change the case on this one because it has a swing tray on the inside. And I don't have a white case with a, um, a swing tray yet. I would have to order one on eBay. I don't know if it's even really worth it. I'm just going to probably keep it like that. I got uh, Scooby Doo and the Samurai Sword. We got Scooby Doo, Abra Cadabra Doo. These are some of the the newer age movies. These were probably movies from the 2000s and up. We got Scooby Doo meets Batman. A couple of holiday themed Scooby-Doo's. You got um, Scooby-Doo Volume 4, Merry Scary Holiday. Four episodes from the hit TV series. I got Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. A lot of these I had on VHS back in the day when the kids were little. The clamshell VHS. Those are long gone. I wish I kept those. Scooby-Doo and the Pirates. Scooby-Doo and the Goblin King. I think they look pretty good with the white cases on them. We got um, Scooby-Doo TV episodes for Monster Matinee. And the last one is uh, Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders, full-length movie. I forgot to show you guys when I opened up the, or when I showed off the Night Killer Blu-ray that I got from Severin, that I also got the uh, pin from Pixel Elixir the enamel pin and they also sent a couple stickers here's kind of the uh, the logo for pickle pixel elixir they sent a couple of other logos intervision picture core Severin logo there's a bookmark and then there was a st sticker from a scene in the movie that was the uh, Night Killer bundle that they were offering on their website. So I picked that up. And two more things to show and then we'll wrap this video up. I got a couple of DVD box sets that are out of print and this is the From the World of Sid and Marty Croft H.R. Puffin Stuff The Complete Series it was a show from 1969 and only ran for one year 17 episodes and this was put out by Rhino Records in 2003 back when Rhino Records was owned by Time Warner and 
and this box set is uh, sold out and it's very pricey I got a good deal on this one it was sealed but I opened it up so I can show you guys it's a three disc set and there are the episodes there's some extra features they're not listed it's kind of a psychedelic type show this ran in syndication during the 70s as well it comes with a little booklet this talks about the episodes hey lyrics for the theme song and so that is the HR puff and stuff complete series from Rhino Records from the world of Sid and Marty Croft and then finally for this update video I got another out-of-print box set this is the outer limits the new series from 1995 and this box set I purchased used gently used I got this for 15 bucks on eBay and there's a, this is another one that goes for ridiculous prices you just got to kind of keep your eye open if there's something that you want don't just jump at it right away unless you can't wait anymore but uh, this was on my wish list for a couple years now literally on eBay and I saw that there was a lady selling it for 20 plus shipping or best offer and I offered her 15 and she took it so I think the shipping was about five bucks so I got this for 20 bucks shipped and there's other sellers that are selling this for over 60 bucks so this I believe had 154 episodes total and I'm just gonna kind of quickly go through this I'm not gonna go through every case but you have the outer limits Fantastic Androids and Robots collection. It says that this show ran for five years, 1995 to 2000. So it's on a flipper disc, and then you get the inserts. Uh, this is a series that has been bootlegged quite a bit I wanted to make sure that mine was official and I asked the seller if it had the inserts and then she said yes I mean it's easy to bootleg the inserts too but chances are if you're gonna get a Chinese bootleg copy they're not gonna have the inserts in there but again it they may so another flipper disc I'm not gonna pull those out but there's another insert uh, time travel and infinity sex and science fiction these are all full frame and I from what I heard the the um, picture quality is not the greatest it almost looks like a, a VHS transfer from what I heard some cleaned up a little nicer than others but I don't know if we're gonna get a blu-ray anytime soon but now that I bought this box set you can pretty much guarantee that they're coming out with the blu-ray box set next week just because I bought this now but this one is aliens among us and the last one is death and beyond so that was it guys that was my haul for the past couple weeks I guess let me know what you thought about it. If you have any questions or comments, please go and subscribe to Controller Cramps. Tell them I sent you. He's a good dude. I'm sure a lot of you guys maybe already are because I think he's pretty, he's pretty vocal uh, in the community as far as uh, leaving comments and showing support to other people. So it may be that you know him already. Here's one for the contest and here's another one for the contest. I was able to get penitentiary incubus got kind of a mess going on here we got uh, iron warrior orgy of the dead incubus toy story please go subscribe to Jordan 
giving up 96. Tell him I sent you. Another great dude. Really like Jordan. Longtime friend of mine. Cinderella, one, two, and three. Night Killer, aka Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Murder Made Easy, Cherokee Creek, Penitentiary, Goosebumps 2, New York Ripper, Piranha, Scooby Doo Lot, The Outer Limits, HR Puffin Stuff, Target Cinderella, and some PS4 games and the Scooby Doo movies. And there's Hannah. <laughs> okay guys thank you for watching take care and i will hopefully talk to you soon later